This video is going to tell you all about CUDA alternatives, which ones are available, which ones are promising and viable, and which ones are totally out of question. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture, is NVIDIA's proprietary framework for programming GPUs. It provides a language extension, a compiler, runtime, various libraries, and tooling that deeply integrate with NVIDIA hardware. Over time, CUDA has become the de facto standard in GPU computing, especially in AI, HPC, and scientific workloads, which gives NVIDIA strong leverage or a near monopoly over software in this domain. Many libraries, frameworks, and research codes are CUDA-based, which ties developers to NVIDIA's hardware ecosystem. As I said earlier, in this video, we are going to look at three major alternatives that aim to reduce such vendor lock-in. The first one is scale. The second one is HIP or HIP. And the third one is ZLUDA. We are going to explain what each one of these is and how it works internally. Then compare them side by side in a table. And finally, I will share my opinion on the strength and weaknesses of all of these projects. The objective here is to help understand whether these alternatives are practical in real world, in real projects. I also have to point out that there are various other projects which are trying to do the same, but still I believe these three are the ones which are noteworthy. So first up is this scale. Scale is a relatively new project that aims to allow unmodified CUDA source code to run or to be compiled on non-NVIDIA GPUs, mainly AMD. It aims for compatibility with CUDA's language and semantics so that CUDA kernels, host code, memory APIs, and much of the CUDA ecosystem can be reused. The idea is to minimize or eliminate the need for rewriting or porting. Internally, Scale accepts CUDA style syntax, parses kernels and host code and then em emits code for the target GPU architecture which is AMD. It also includes a runtime layer that mimics CUDA's runtime and maps calls to underlying GPU driver interfaces. In cases like dynamic compilation, Scale currently runs the compiler as a subprocess rather than embedding it. It also optimizes and schedules code according to the target GPU characteristic. It is attempting to close the performance gap with native code. One of the issue is that this scale software, this is still evolving and the coverage is not that huge, but maybe in the future because it looks a bit promising to me. Then comes this HIP project, which stands for Heterogeneous Compute Interface for Portability. It is AMD's long-standing portability layer and programming model. This project offers a C++ runtime API plus a kernel language that closely mimics CUDA that allows a shared source code base to run on AMD and NVIDIA devices. If you go through this repo, I'm not entirely sure if this is still alive or not because there are lots of ifs and buts here. HIP is a C++ runtime API and kernel language that allows developers to create portable applications for AMD and NVIDIA GPU is what AMD promises. But the HIP repository is marked as retired. If you go through it, let me quickly take you there and show you if you go down, it says this. The developed branch of HIP now only accepts patch updates mirrored from Rockham system which we have been covering on the channel for quite some time. That means while HIP as a concept, which is API plus kernel language is still active, its active development has been merged or shifted to a broader Rockham system umbrella. In terms of how it works, that is pretty interesting. If you go through various um, websites of AMD, 
He provides the host runtime and device kernel API that mirror CUDA structure, memory allocation, kernel launches, streams, events, etc. On AMD platform, HIP maps calls down to the Rockham stack via LLVM Rockham driver layers. On NVIDIA hardware, HIP can act as a thin wrapper over CUDA runtime driver functions. So the usual workflow is source code and then it uh, this software compiles via hip aware compiler to target the gpu it is quite low level and close to cuda design and i'm not sure why amd is not really following it up i will leave that uh, you know wondering to you but i think seems like quite a good pro, pro, uh, you know project but lately i don't think that much is happening there then comes zluda this is a project which I have been covering a lot lately on the channel too. It is a compatibility translation layer that attempts to run unmodified CUDA binaries or CUDA based applications on non-NVIDIA GPUs by intercepting CUDA calls and doing runtime translation. The goal here is to make a CUDA application believe it's talking to a CUDA runtime while behind the scene those calls are forwarded or translated to an alternate backend. The mechanism works in two main parts. First, Zluda intercepts or wraps CUDA runtime and library calls such as memory allocation, kernel launch, and then routes them to its internal or translated equivalents that use a non-NVIDIA GPU stack. I have done a complete video on Zluda if you are interested in learning more. Please just search with Zetuda on the channel and you should be able to find heaps of videos. Now let me show you the comparison table between all of these three. Before that, I would also request you to become a member of the channel as that helps a lot. Also, let's go to this table and check out what is happening here. So this table primarily presents key trade-off across scale, HIP and Zetuda on compatibility, performance overhead, library support and lot of other things. Very quickly checking this, the strength of scale here is the promise of letting existing CUDA code compile and run on alternative GPUs with zero or minimal changes and that is quite compelling. But if scale can deliver robust compatibility and good performance and the coverage could be broadened, I think that could be a real good promising project. But the I think it is still quite early and it doesn't really support full breadth of CUDA APIs or corner cases and even some of the major cases. Performance tuning for target ar architecture is also not there yet, especially for the ported code and CUDA can break it any time, but that is the case with any other wrapper too. But mainly that those are the weaknesses and strengths of this project in my opinion. HIP is not that new it is well understood with a strong foundation in the rockham system but i think just because it is retired and the development now flows via rockham system so the project boundary is a bit diffused porting effort is still needed very much so and some of the CUDA idioms may not even translate cleanly or may require manual adaptation zluda I think this is the biggest promising project for me because the biggest draw for me here is that you don't really need any source code changes. You can run existing CUDA binaries, even closed source on alternative GPU hardware. That convenience can be decisive in various scenarios. There are few issues too, like there is some translation overhead, especially on the first use, just in time compilation and that can really, really hurt latency sensitive applications. Approach, in my opinion, is still quite brittle. Any changes, even the minor one in CUDA or the backend might break translation. So that is where I think they need to improve, but the start is quite good. I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent. iGent is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application that empowers you to build, manage, and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. Again, please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.